Hello, and welcome to the A320. My name is Ken Maxwell, and I'm a Denver-based flight attendant. We'll be touring the A320 today, concentrating on door operation, galleys, and other safety and service features. Cabin equipment is continually updated in response to current marketing trends and also flight attendant needs, so be sure to refer to your in-flight handbook for the most current information. Let's start our tour of the A320 with a brief overview. There are eight exits, four on each side of the aircraft. Door exits are located at the cross aisles, and dual window exits are located over the wings. There are five aft-facing jump seats, two at one left, two at two left, and one jump seat that is attached to the first class closet and folds out into the aisle. Galleys are located on the right side. Each galley has a forward and aft section. Safety equipment is located near each jump seat, in the forward closet, behind the last row of seats, and in overhead bins throughout the aircraft. Crew decompression oxygen, megaphones, and flashlights are located at each jump seat. Portable oxygen, fire extinguishers, first aid and infection control kits, and sharps containers are found in the overhead bins. Overwater equipped aircraft, like this one, also have a full complement of overwater safety items. We'll be showing you some specific areas as we go along. Remember to use your in-flight handbook during your pre-flight to locate and inspect the safety equipment listed for your location. It's also a good idea to review how to use them. Like all of United's aircraft, the A320 is accessible to customers with disabilities. The armrests at each right side aisle seat fold up to allow easy transfer to and from a wheelchair. The accessible lavatory is equipped with a privacy curtain and is located at door two left. Now let's tour the aircraft forward to aft. Bob has been assigned to show you door one left. Perform your usual pre-flight safety check using your in-flight handbook. You'll find oxygen bottles and a megaphone in these bins over seats 1A and B. The first class closet, which is used for customer belongings, is behind this sliding door. Just forward are fire extinguishers and a compartment containing survival kits. In a ditching, each kit is attached to a white lanyard located at the base of each door. Verify the lanyard is accessible, but don't pull on it. All four doors are alike. The slide pressure gauge is on the lower part of the slide pack. Use your flashlight to verify that the pointer on the gauge lies on or above the green band. The door pressure gauge is inside the door hinge. Again, use your flashlight to look into the viewport. Check that the pointer on the gauge shows the setting in the in-flight handbook. There are two aft-facing jump seats on the forward bulkhead at door one left. Crew decompression oxygen drops from above. This is the forward attendant panel, or FAP. It's divided into three sections, and the bottom section is for water and waste. During your pre-flight, press the indicator on button to verify water and waste. Beneath the jump seat are compartments containing additional safety equipment. Now let's talk about the door. When the door is unlocked, the word unlocked appears in the door lock indicator window. When customer service locks the door, the word locked comes into view. The door must be locked before it can be armed. This is to prevent the possibility of false latching. Now, to arm any locked door, press the arming lever down to the armed position. A red placard with the word armed appears in the window above the handle. Verify that the girt bar indicator lines up with the door armed indicator placard on the slide pack. To disarm the door, lift the arming lever up to the disarmed position. The word disarmed appears in the indicator window, and the girt bar indicator no longer lines up with the placard. To activate the evac alarm, press the command switch at either attendant panel. The alarm sounds, and evacuation lights illuminate on both panels, in the cockpit, and on the call system overhead. To assess conditions, use a sweeping motion, side to side and up and down, and if it's clear, Pull the control handle inboard and up as far as it will go. The door will swing open and the power assist will take over. 
An oversized single lane slide or slide raft will deploy automatically whenever an arm door is open. Grab this assist handle or the jump seat harness and reach down and pull the manual inflation handle which is located in the right side of the girt. In a ditching, toss the survival kit which is attached to the lanyard out the open door to the forward side. This will keep the evacuation path clear. Evacuation commands are jump, jump. There are two lights on the door just below the window. The white light illuminates any time an armed door is open, and we hope you never have to see that light. The red light illuminates any time the engines are stopped, the door is disarmed, and the cabin pressure exceeds a certain level. No flight attendant action is necessary. Now let's look at the FAP. This section controls cabin lighting. Main on turns on all the panel and cabin lights. Main off turns them off and is used primarily by maintenance. This section controls the level of the entry lights. They can either be full bright, dim, or dimmer still. The level of cabin lighting can be set independently in each cabin. These buttons turn on the window and ceiling lights on or off. The three buttons under power are the master controls for the lav lights, flight attendant work lights, and customer reading lights. They should always be on. The middle section controls the audio entertainment. The button under the label PES is the master control for the boarding music and for music at the customer seats. With the master PES button on, you can select boarding music volume using these controls. The bottom section is labeled water and waste, but it also contains some other controls. As I pointed out earlier, this is where you pre-flight your water and waste quantity. These lights indicate when an individual lavatory system is in op. Below is a button labeled SIDS. SIDS stands for Cabin Intercommunication Data System, which is the name of the computerized system that controls all the cabin systems. Even though you'll probably realize when the cabin lighting or PA system doesn't work, the caution light illuminates automatically anytime there's a problem. If it illuminates on the ground, notify the cockpit. If it illuminates in flight, log it on the cabin maintenance form. Press the caution button to turn it off. It will re-illuminate once you've landed to alert maintenance. We've already talked about the evac command button. This is your lav smoke indicator. If there is smoke in a lavatory, this button will illuminate red and you'll hear three chimes every 30 seconds until you press reset. The affected lavatory will be displayed in this information window. This is called the Attendant Indication Panel, or AIP. Whenever you hear an alarm or call tone, the forward or aft indicator will illuminate and a specific locator message will be displayed here. Now let's take a look at the video system on the A320. It's located in this compartment facing the aisle. Specific operating instructions for this system are covered in detail in the A320 CBT lesson. Verify the system pre-flight by pressing the system power button. Just below the video system is a jump seat that folds out from the wall. It must be occupied for takeoff and landing, and it provides a direct view of the cabin. When you stand up, the jump seat automatically retracts to its stowed position. Forward of the jump seat, you'll find crew decompression oxygen, an AIP, a crew interphone, and a compartment containing additional safety equipment. Now let's join Sarah across the aisle in the forward galley at door one right. The galleys themselves are similar to the 737 and 757. The galley has two sections on each side of the cross aisle. The forward section, known as G1, has room for three universal carts below counter level. There are no mushroom tie-down fittings anywhere on the aircraft, so always use the quarter turn restraints in the galleys and the tow brakes in the aisles. At counter level, there's a coffee warmer, paper towel dispenser, water spigot, and drain. Wastewater drains overboard, so only use the drains in flight. If the drain should clog in flight, clean the strainer. If it stays clogged, pull this manual sink drain lever once to clear it. If it remains clogged, log it on a cabin maintenance form. Above counter level is a coffee maker, an electrical panel, and two ovens. The oven temperature is preset. Just set the timer, press power on. The cook hold light tells you whether the entrees are cooking or holding. 
The aft portion of the galley is known as G2. Below counter level, there is space for three universal carts. Queen carts are stored here, and this is a linen chute. At counter level, there is an enclosed storage area with a work light. Above counter level, is space for three dry supply containers and two miscellaneous storage areas. Well, that about covers the galley. Why don't we rejoin Ken in the cabin? The A320 has new seats. First class seats have an adjustable headrest, and economy seats have both a headrest and a footrest. They must all be stowed for takeoff and landing. There's a handrail mounted underneath the overhead bins and runs the entire length of the cabin. When a customer rings a flight attendant call button, a light illuminates above the row. Press the button again to reset it. Escape path lighting on the A320 is on the left side of the aisle and is mounted on the lower portion of the seat. A red light indicates an exit row. Additional lighting is on both sides of the aisle mounted underneath the overhead bins. They run the entire length of the cabin. Dual window exits are located over the wing and are always armed for emergency operation. To evacuate from a window exit, remove the cover and pull down on the handle. Use the assist handle to remove the window from the evacuation path. Pull the backup manual inflation handle located on the upper inner corner of each window frame. The evacuation commands from the window exits are step out, legs first, follow arrows. In a ditching, if time permits and if needed, remove the escape line marked lifeline from a compartment above the window exits. Attach one end to a fitting located in the upper outer corner of each window exit. Have a customer take the other end out and attach it to one of the two fittings on the wing. This will serve as a stable handhold for customers evacuating out onto the wing. Now let's finish up our tour by going to the rear of the aircraft with Michelle. The flight attendant call panel is located up above. Although the colors are the same as on other aircraft, some of the tones are different. Amber is a call from a lavatory. The amber light flashes three times every 30 seconds when smoke is detected. Pink is a crew call. Flashing pink is a call from the cockpit. Flashing pink also accompanies the evac alarm. Blue is a customer call. Firefighting equipment is mounted on the walls behind the last row of seats. This is the aft galley of the A320. The economy class service is coordinated from this location. When the flight is full, six economy meals will be boarded in the first class galley to match the number of customers on board, so be sure to serve those meals first. The forward part of the galley, or G3, has space below counter level for three universal carts. Above counter level, there are five compartments for dry supplies, a miscellaneous storage area, and a paper clip. Meals are removed from the universal carts and cooked here in the ovens at G4. Below counter level, there is space for four universal carts. This is a miscellaneous storage area, and this is the manual sink drain lever. At counter level, you have a water spigot and drain, a paper towel dispenser, two coffee warmers. Above counter level, there is another miscellaneous storage area, two coffee makers, and the electrical panel. Finally, just above the ovens, there are two enclosed compartments for carrier door storage. Across from the galley, there are two lavatories. The aft lavatory is wheelchair accessible, and it's also equipped with a privacy curtain. Just above the aft lavatory door is another AIP. A dual flight attendant jump seat is located directly across from the aft lavatory. This small panel is the aft attendant panel, or AAP, like the FAP, it has a command, 
evac, and reset button. Reset silences the alarm at this location only. The emergency light switch is also located on this panel. There is an interphone at each flight attendant jump seat location and also in the cockpit. To make a call, just press the button once for the desired location. If you hear a two-tone chime, check the flight attendant call panel to find out if the call is for you. Check the AIP if you want to know where the call is coming from. Hello, this is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. I have your six extra meals up front. Great. Thank you. Bye now. Well, we've certainly enjoyed taking you on a tour of the A320 today. If you have any questions, consult your in-flight handbook or check with an in-flight supervisor. Thanks for joining us and have a great flight.